While I was researching a future video, I stumbled upon an interesting article on AncientOrigins.com. This article talks about the first ever alleged photo of Bigfoot, and the story behind the photo is extremely fascinating. This photo was taken in Canada in 1894, and it shows what appears to be a dead Bigfoot. And what I like about this story is at this time in the late 1800s, there was no such thing as a Bigfoot. So people during this time period wouldn't try to pull off a hoax as nobody knew about Bigfoot. Although there were sightings of what explorers described as wild men, but because what they saw walked just like us, they believed that it was human, even though they were extremely tall and covered in hair. Now this photo was sent and made famous by the cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman. It's believed that some trappers in Western Canada came face to face with a Bigfoot that was snooping around their camp. So scared out of their minds, they did what us humans do and they shot it. And because they had never seen anything like this before, they took some photos and then sent them to the Canadian Forest Services for answers. But here's where things get even more interesting. According to this article, the government did not give them their pictures back. So the guy who took the photos broke into their building and he was able to get this one picture back. But sadly, he wasn't able to find the others. So if this story is true, then it seems that even back then in the 1800s, they were trying to cover up the existence of Bigfoot. But not necessarily the government at this time, but more like powerful companies who were afraid that their business would suffer if it was known that such a creature did exist, as they made money by killing animals for fur or cutting down trees, etc. Now the reason why we know this information is because it's on the back of the photo. On the back it says year 1894. Then it says the location, the company. Then it says they took the picture, and the guy who was in the picture went and stole it back from the forestry records. I believe his last name was Holiday, don't know his first name. Never took all the pictures, only one, and took the pictures of the rest. So it seems that this information was passed down throughout the years, and it should be pretty easy for an expert to determine if this photo is legit. If it is from the 1800s, then this is one heck of a story. As like I said before, there was no such thing as Bigfoot during this time period. So I find these stories that happened a long time ago to be more credible. Now the Native Americans did have stories and legends about a creature that they called Sasquatch, as well as other names. But back in those days, these stories were not very well known to Western explorers. It wasn't until many years later that people made the connection between the Sasquatch and what they saw in the depths of the forest. Now since we just covered the first alleged photo of Bigfoot, I would also like to go over one of the first, if not the first documented sighting of Bigfoot by Western explorers in North America. In 1913, a journal from Spanish explorers was discovered. And within this journal tells an amazing story that happened in the 1700s. In this journal, a man named Mazzino talked about a creature that they called the Matlog. And I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing this wrong, but he stated that these creatures lived high up on the mountains, and from time to time they would come down and terrorize the native tribes that lived in the valleys below. These creatures had fangs like a wolf, long claws, but it had the skull similar to that of a human. And according to eyewitnesses, it would emit a horrifying scream that would send chills down their spine. They were convinced that these things were demons. Now I can't recall if I've ever heard a story coming from my witnesses about them hearing Bigfoot screaming. But one thing that did surprise me is yet again here's another story about Bigfoot or a creature similar to Bigfoot living in the mountains and that they would come down to kill or kidnap the native people. In my last Bigfoot video I told a story about a Native American woman who claimed that she got abducted by Bigfoot during one of their attacks and she lived with them up in the mountains for a long time until she got sick. So they bring her back to her tribe. And that night, according to the story, she gave birth to a deformed baby that sadly died a couple hours later. Now since it's Memorial Day, I wanted to go over a sighting known as the Memorial Day Bigfoot that happened in 1996. Even some believe that this footage is right up there with the Bob Gimlin and Patterson footage. Now when I first saw this, I really wasn't that impressed. But many years later, I learned that you can see in the footage what looks like a baby or a young Bigfoot holding on to what must be his father or mother. And please let me know in the comments, what do you think? One such video was recorded by Lori Pate in 1996 while on a fishing trip with her family and friends in Northeast Washington. This video clip, known as the Memorial Day Get footage, ready. Oh, I know. 
shows a hair-covered upright figure running across a mountainside. Okay, where the, um, see where the bush is? Yeah. And then there's a small pine tree. Mm -hmm. And then there, he was right behind that small pine tree, right? While not greatly detailed, it has certain compelling aspects to it, including the movement and the high speed at which the figure appears to move across the rugged terrain. He's, he's off. It's a big Memorial Day footage, in this case, you know, from an estimate, you can tell that, that this isn't a very tall individual, maybe between five foot eight, five foot nine, and six foot three. From Richard Knowles' perspective, running across loose rocks on the side of a mountain while wearing a fur costume would be impossible. It's raining up here. Speed can all be measured by comparing the moving animal to fixed objects seen in the backgrounds. If we can compare the size of the rocks and the distance between the rocks to the size of the creature, we'll be able to make an accurate comparison and determine the creature's stride and height. The backgrounds of the Patterson and Freeman footage have changed dramatically over the years due to encroaching forest growth or human activity. However, the site of the Memorial Day footage remains much as it did when the footage was recorded in 1996. Lori, grab the camcorder. Our goal is to determine if the creature is in fact moving at a rate of speed too fast for a human. That's not a man. Well, maybe it will come back out. Looks like a Bigfoot to me. Yeah, I saw it come out of the woods and start running across and it was just far enough away where I wasn't quite sure what I was seeing, you know, only it was big and tall. And I had my binoculars in the camper. I turned around, grabbed them and put the binoculars on it and I saw about the last three seconds of it walking into the timber and that's when my jaw dropped and I remember just saying, that's not a man. I could see the long hair coming off the bottom of the arm. Is what, that's what really caught my eye. And then it was gone. But is this Memorial Day creature's behavior consistent with that of a real animal's reaction to its surroundings? Dr. Sarmiento knows the behavior of wild primates and how they adapt to subtle changes in their environment. When I compare this footage, the Memorial Day footage, to the Patterson-Gimlin, one of the things I see is that the behavior of the Memorial Day footage, the individual seems to be a lot more natural. When he enters an open field in, 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 in a run, and then he get, goes behind the hill and he tries to hide. And I guess there he can slow up because he knows he's reached safety by the time he reaches the forest. Robert Taft and Associates and Pacific Survey's task was to provide exact data on size, speed, and gait of the creature. In consideration of our field data, we're prepared to offer the following scientific conclusion. First, the creature in a video has a height of 5.3 feet and has a leg length of 2.5 feet, quite similar to human proportions. Second, the creature is running at a speed of 8.56 miles per hour. Contrast this with our demonstration runner who was able to negotiate the same path at 17.1 miles per hour, twice as fast as the creature. Third. We found the creature's stride to be 4.25 feet long. Derek Pryor, our runner, used a faster stride of 6.8 feet along the same path. We are still puzzled by the fact that at the end of the tape, the creature appears to grow taller by eight inches. If this is a real animal, one explanation is that it may be carrying a young animal that has climbed higher on its back. Until next time, this is Paranormal Junkie. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned.